So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, sir, for the opportunity. So I'll be talking upon retinal detachment in cases of blunt trauma. So the incidence is of uh, it's equivalent to the 11 to the 40 percent of all the rheumatogenous RD causes are because of the trauma, and out of these, the 80 percent of the traumatic RD is because of the blunt trauma, and out of these, in 28 percent of the myopic RDs. The trauma is a cause and it is because of the giant retinal tears and nasal dialysis. In pediatric cases, it accounts to 3 to 6 percent because of the trauma. And what is the cause is that because of the formed vitreous jelly, there is a uh, cause of delayed retinal detachment in young patients, increased chances of PVR, more chances of macular involvement and therefore the poor visual prognosis. Mechanism of injury, if we say it is a coup, contra coup, and the globe deformation. At the coup, it is the site of the impact, and in the contralateral, it is the contra coup. While the most important is the globe deformation, which is because of the AP anterior posterior compression and decompression, which leads to the disinsertion of the iris root, vitreous base avulsion, choroidal rupture, PVD changes, and the scleral rupture. Usually, these cases present late and only 30% of the patients are diagnosed within a month time. Significant delay is because the patient is young and uncooperative. There are associated systemic inju injuries and the ocular injuries. And sometimes because of the media haze, you cannot see that there is an underlying RD present there. Late diagnosis is because of the opaque media, failure to examine and because of the uncooperative patients. But it is seen that if we diagnose and treat the retinal detachment within the six weeks of time, then there are chances of good visual prognosis. PVR is more commonly seen in younger patients because of the delayed presentation, associate hemorrhage and inflammation. In the closed globe injury, the breaks occur because of the rapid scleral deformation. And this occurs at the site of the injury, that is the direct or it is distant from the site of the injury, that is the indirect impact, which occurs at 180 degrees. And high risk eyes, we all know it is myopes, high myopes, aphakic patients, and with lattice degeneration, and the cases with the fellow eyes with the retinal detachment. So now coming to the breaks which are seen during the blunt trauma. The most common is the dialysis, which is seen in 53% of the cases. And the pathognomic of blunt trauma is the base avulsion. Round breaks are also seen, but it is less commonly seen in cases with the trauma. Horseshoe tear, it is a very rare thing which we see with the traumatic RDs. And if it happens, it occurs at the posterior edge of the dentate or the base or at the edge of the lattice. Giant retinal tears are the second most common cause of the traumatic retinal detachment. And in these cases, usually the PVD is absent. Most important is coming to the history part. We need to see what are the symptoms of the patients. These are the usual symptoms like other retinal detachment cases. Clinical features, as we have already discussed, it is in, seen more commonly in the young patients which have the formed vitreous jelly and no PVD and they usually present slate. So examination, it depends, the visual equity depends upon the location and the associated signs. Pupils should also be always seen and the application tonometry and gonioscopy should always be done in cases of blunt trauma. Evaluation of retina is equally important and remember you should try to avoid scleral depression in cases of trauma. Extraocular motility test should be done in all the cases. And the most important thing is to always assess the uninvolved eye to recognize the unrecognized injuries, medical legal aspect, and injury may be an incidental finding. B scan in helps in diagnosing, surgical planning, and prognosticating. It uh, tells you about the location, the density, and the associated vitreoretinal relationships. This table helps you in differentiating whether this is a case of a posterior vitreous detachment or a retinal detachment. If you see there is a one point attachment, it is usually posterior vitreous detachment, while with the RD it is two point attachment. 
these can also help in seeing the foreign bodies which can be seen in cases of occult ruptures rds with dislocated cataractous lens or iols ct scan or mri should always be done to rule out the occult scleral rupture especially in cases of the flat tire sign where you see the dense subconjunctival hemorrhage with no view of the other features treatment modalities depends upon in which stage the patient is presenting you if it is a uh, anterior break you can think of cryotherapy in cases of subclinical rd laser retinopexy should be done in cases of the posterior breaks and the adhesions are usually seen within one week of time scleral buckling is a primary procedure of choice in such cases because there is no pvd and if there is no evidence of foreign body or vitreous hemorrhage and if the breaks are anterior vitrectomy is recommended when there are chances of you are suspecting pvi changes dislocated lens associated macular hole posterior tear or subretinal hemorrhages encircling band is advisable along with the vitrectomy when there is larger dialysis more anterior severe pvr and the inferior breaks so goals are to clear the media directly relieve the traction which is pulling the retina reattach the retina and the tamponading aging so prognosis is good with the with or without the buckle in such cases so this is a case of retinal detachment with 270 degree giant retinal tear the most important step is to see whether the infusion cannula is inside the vitreous cavity or not and if you see that it is not inside then you should use the cutter to make an entry into the vitreous cavity else it will land you will land up in the choroidal effusion so after this the routine steps of doing the retinal surgery flattening the retina and then doing the laser and tamponading it with the silicon oil this is the case of traumatic rd with macular hole after relief after doing the vitrectomy in such cases we need to stain the ilm multiple times so that we can recognize all the membranes which are present on the posterior pole and after relieving the membranes over the posterior pole we need to just put the pfcl to stabilize the posterior pole and then we should go for the removal of the anterior membranes else you will put traction over the posterior pole and sometimes there are uh, chances of creating iatrogenic breaks so with the cutter or with the forceps you can relieve the anterior membranes and never hesitate to do a relaxing retinectomy if you are feel that the membranes are not completely removed or even after removing the membrane the retina is not flattening so this is a case of traumatic retinal detachment with old case of grt the so there is severe pvr after removing the fluid you can see the contracted retina so the relaxing retinectomy is done and then the pfcl was uh, yes it was stained to remove the posterior membranes and then pfcl was put so that it can stabilize the posterior pole and rest of the membranes can be removed comparatively easily so under pfcl the endo laser is done and after that the fluid gas exchange is done and the tamponading is done so this is the last case of subluxated cataract with the old traumatic retinal detachment one thing to remember in these cases is before removing the lens or doing the lensectomy using the vitrectomy cutter or the fragmentum whatever you are planning to first re, i mean make the lens free of all the vitreous so that you are not pulling the vitreous or putting traction over the vitreous so after you have relieved the lens from the vitreous you can use the fragmentum just to do the lensectomy and then rest of the steps are the same so what are the prognostic factors that there can be a need of if there is a need of scleral buckle of encircling band then it is a sign of poor prognostic factor iatrogenic breaks need of the tamponade need of lensectomy along with the vitrectomy what is the entrance wound location and whether there was a vitreous prolapse or associated endophthalmitis 
and if there is any foreign body then definitely it is the visual prognostic factor for the same thank you